not reading about is the government actually abusing these programs and uh, you know, listening in on people's phone calls or inappropriately reading people's emails. If you are the ordinary person and you start seeing a bunch of headlines saying, uh, U.S., Big Brother, looking down on you, collecting telephone records, etc., well, understandably, people would be concerned. I would be, too, if I wasn't uh, inside the government. According to a story appearing in USA Today, the current NSA surveillance of Americans is based on an earlier pre-9-11 program used by the DEA. For over two decades, the DEA and the Justice Department collected logs on every phone call from the United States to over 100 foreign countries. Officials said the operation was related to drug trafficking. The program said to have been discontinued by the Justice Department is described as the first known effort to collect data on the phone calls of Americans in bulk without regard to the Fourth Amendment. The Justice Department described the DEA program as one of the most important and effective federal drug law enforcement initiatives as it went about trying to convince telecoms to turn over phone call records. The drug war, another perfect case point example of problem reaction solution, creating secret police and highly militarized teams to strike out against the American people on a host of political issues, using the drug war as the crisis. The rationale was contained in a previously undisclosed letter sent to Sprint in 1998 by Mary Lee Warren, the head of the department's narcotics and dangerous drugs section. Warren said the operation had been approved at the highest levels of federal law enforcement authority, including then Attorney General Janet Reno and her deputy, Eric Holder. The revelation provides additional evidence that the government is wantonly violating the constitutional rights of American citizens. Recently, secret slides from the NSA surfaced bragging about how they could hack iPhones. And they say, who knew in 1984 that this would be Big Brother? and that the zombies would be paying customers. That's right, the people doing this to you see this as Orwellian, yet they identify with Big Brother. They gloat about what they're doing to you, the zombies. You buy a piece of technology that has private personal uses, and they turn it into a tool of surveillance. Uh, when you see everything, you see them on a more frequent basis, and you recognize that some of these things are actually abuses, and when you talk to people about them, uh, in a place like this, where this is the, the normal state of business, people tend not to take them very seriously and you know, move on from them. But over time, that awareness of wrongdoing sort of builds up. The programs that have been discussed over the last couple of days in the press uh, are secret in the sense that they're classified. But they're not secret in the sense that uh, when it comes to telephone calls, every member of Congress has been briefed on this program. Uh, with respect to all these programs, uh, the relevant intelligence committees are fully briefed on these programs. Uh, these are programs that have been authorized by broad bipartisan majorities repeatedly the since 2000. To complain that I didn't know this was happening. We've had many, many. Uh, meetings that have been both classified and unclassified. Massive intelligence gathering aimed at the American people began at the end of the Second World War with the establishment of the National Security State. The National Security Act of 1947 established the Department of Defense, the National Security Council, and the Central Intelligence Agency. In addition to the U.S. Army working with the country's three major telegraph companies, ITT, World International, RCA Global, and Western Union, to monitor all telegrams moving in and out of the United States, the FBI began a massive surveillance program targeting dissidents and activists considered a threat to the establishment. COINTELPRO also included efforts to destroy the reputations of targeted individuals and other dirty tricks, allegedly also including violence and assassination. We are now entering the NSA back. We're going to go into the military establishment, but we couldn't resist. There's so many signs here saying, do not go in here, essentially, or you'll be arrested. No filming whatsoever. This is complete surveillance state on us, all these cameras. Yet, we're not allowed to even film with an iPhone. They are staring at us like we're some type of goblins or something. 
I need you to turn your cameras off. Yeah, listen, pa- listen, they're calling in their buddies. They're about to confiscate all of our cameras right now. Well, just keep the uh, live feed rolling. It's First saying, Amendment. Hey, we're saying we're on live feed, First Amendment. We're saying First Amendment. We just want to ask some questions. We're just trying. We're live streaming right now to, on Alex Jones show. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Hey, hey. Are you cut the live feed? These guys Alex, love to scare Americans. The live feed. They love to try to intimidate everybody. They're taking the cameras. They're taking the cameras right now. There you go. National incident. You can't pull up in a parking lot listen, listen, listen. Okay. in America. Okay. There you have the NSA people grabbing the camera at a parking lot on the edge of the base. Live on air right now. We're just live on air. Okay. So they took the cameras, turned off all the stuff, and then we're standing there. And I'm saying you're not deleting the content. I'm not allowing you to delete the content. We will leave. We will leave. And he's like, no, it's illegal under CFR, whatever. And we called you live on air, and you looked it up. It's not even what it says at all. They have no idea. It's not even the right one you referenced, and he has no idea. So we just kept saying, that's not even true. You're lying to us. You're not telling us the truth. It's completely fake. And he was like, no, it's not. I know the law. I'm a lieutenant of the NSA. And he said, are you going to arrest me if I don't give your ID? He's like, maybe. And then he's like, I got a dog. And I'm like, <laughs> it was really <laughs> almost funny. It's really almost funny how pathetic it was. In a study of the NSA, historian Thomas Johnson noted that the agency engaged in widespread wiretapping and watch list operations, and it seemed to understand were disreputable, if not outright illegal and unconstitutional. So what do you guys think about the NSA spying program? Uh, no comment. I have yeah. no comment whatsoever. So are you cool with it, or? Me? I'm kind of indifferent about it. You're indifferent, but it's illegal. Okay. NSA, uh, <laughs> I have no clue. I have no idea about anything that's going on. The National Security Agency is spying on all your telephone calls, your emails, your tweets, your Facebook. Decades before 9-11 and the subsequent Bush order that directed the NSA to eavesdrop on every phone call, email message, and who knows what else going into or out of the United States, U.S. citizens included, they did the same thing with telegrams. And anyone who thinks this is new legal and technological terrain should read up on that program, writes security analyst Bruce Schneier. Louis Tordella, the deputy director of the agency from the late 50s until 1974, told congressional investigator L. Britt Snyder, whatever they did, they did it out of patriotic reasons. They had presumed NSA wanted the tapes to look for foreign intelligence. The USA Today report and the corporate media in general have failed to note that massive government surveillance of the American people predates September 11, 2001, and has been a prominent feature of the national security state since its establishment by President Harry Truman in 1947. The president is trying to take some steps to make the American people more comfortable about what it is we're doing. That's going to be hard because, frankly, Bob, some steps to make Americans more comfortable will actually make Americans less safe. Nobody's listening to the content of people's phone calls. This program, by the way, is fully overseen, not just by Congress, but by the FISA court, a court specially put together to evaluate classified programs to make sure that the executive branch or government generally is not abusing them and that they're, it's being carried out consistent with the Constitution. Written by Kurt Nimmo and reported on by John Bound for InfoWars.com.